with 2023 nearing an end. These are the most unforgettable calls of the year so far. Starting off with this shocking 911 call when a seven-month-old baby became unresponsive after being exposed to fentanyl by her parents. The call came from a Boca Raton hotel. 911, what is the address of the emergency? Get off this house. Um, What's the um, address? Boca Inn, um, Boca Inn Hotel. My oh. son is not responding. It's like he's gasping for air. Can you please? Okay, I'll send you some help. I'll be right in, here. Boca Inn, Boca Inn, Boca Inn Hotel. Okay. Boca Inn, can you please send them? Ma'am. Please send okay, them. Okay, I have the call. Boca this is 1801 North Federal Highway. Room, what room number is he in? Okay. Please right. just come on. He, please, okay. he's gasping for air. Please. Okay. All right. I'm, I don't want nothing to happen to my I'm son. I'm going to stay on the phone with you until we get there, okay? Someone else is dispatching okay, the paramedic. Right Okay, how old right is your now, son, ma'am? Right now, right now. Listen to me so I can help you. How old is your son? My son is seven months. Okay. Please, just come on. Okay, is he awake? Please. Ma'am, listen it's to me. I'm trying to open. Okay, listen to me. I'm asking these questions so I can help him while we're driving it's over. Just come on. I'm not driving to the call. My paramedics are coming. I have to help you while we get there. Do you understand me? Okay, ma'am. Okay, okay. is he awake? Okay, is he awake, ma'am? Okay, but well, he's just gasping for air right now. Okay, he's try just and for okay, air. just go ahead and hold he's your just son. Gasping for air. Okay, I, hold your son. I think that they need to just pump him. Okay, we're on the way out there, ma'am. I'm asking you a question. Is he awake? Ma'am, he's not awake. He has his eyes closed, but ma'am, I know that okay. he's still alive. Okay, is he breathing? He's still alive, babe. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Let's go ahead and let's get some air going his way, okay? Give me one second. Okay, just please come on. Go ahead and unlock the door for me. Hello? Hey, is he breathing? Ma'am, can you verify if he's breathing? Yes, he's breathing. He is breathing? Yes. Okay. Yes, he's breathing. Just send him. Okay. Um, air. Okay. He air his okay. Tilt he his. Air okay, ma'am. Listen to me so I can give you the instructions. Tilt his head back so we can maintain his airway. Do you understand? You said to tilt his head back? Tilt his head back to open his airway. I'm going to do a breathing diagnostics with you. Do you understand me? Ma'am, uh, ma I can't do that right now. Okay, I so put head. someone else on the phone who can follow instructions to help your son. I'm trying to yeah, give you instructions. Yeah. They call. Yeah. Okay. Hello? Sir, I'm trying to give you instructions. We are driving over. I have officers and paramedics driving over. I'm trying to help you. Is he breathing? Yes or no? Yes, he's breathing. Okay. Open his airway by tilting his head back. Do you understand the instruction? He's just, he's just wheezing. Okay. Okay, so he's wheezing. Okay, so he is breathing. Okay, I'm going to stay on the phone until one of my paramedics or officers get there. We're coming from around the corner. We should be there in just a moment. Go ahead and have mom unlock the door for my paramedics so we can come right in. Do you understand? We outside. We outside. Okay. As soon as you see my paramedic, you just let me know, okay? We're going to check his breathing together to make sure it's all right. When I say go, watch him closely and tell me each time his chest rises. Are you ready? Right here. Right here. Hello. Hello. Okay, who is she talking to? Is that the paramedics? No. Is she in contact with the paramedic there, ma'am? Hello. Yes. Okay, who who is she talking to? Is that a paramedic or someone else? Okay, if that's the paramedics, we can disconnect, okay? The mother, 26-year-old Gikia Durkel Hunter, now faces charges of child neglect, fentanyl possession, and evidence tampering. When emergency services arrived, they administered Narcan, reviving the baby. The parents were arrested at the hospital. Meanwhile, fentanyl was found in their belongings in the hotel room including the child's diaper bag. The mother admitted to heroin use, while the father, 27-year-old Bianli Jolicor, acknowledged past narcotics use. 
the baby is expected to make a full recovery. Around 7 a.m., neighbors heard two people banging on the doors and shouting for help. Multiple 911 calls came in. The two, both in their 20s, had escaped the Mossy Meadow Drive house, but what they'd witnessed inside and what followed will haunt them forever. Hello, there's someone knocking a lot of times in front of my house saying someone tried to kill them. Someone's trying to kill them? Okay, where are you at? Give me one. Are they still outside right now? Yeah, they're like, we opened our window because we didn't want to open the door. Okay. Give me a second while I go ahead and get notes in for the officers, okay? Okay. And you said someone uh, they're saying someone wants to kill them or do they want to kill themselves? I yeah, didn't... it's a female and a male, and they keep ringing our doorbell. They won't move from... Okay, are they, do you know if they're white, black, Asian, Hispanic? They're black. Both black? Yeah. Can you see what they're wearing by chance? Um, no. Oh, uh, my name is... Yes. Okay, what's your last name? Uh, oh, my last name? Okay, what's a good phone number for you? Okay, and by chance, do you know them at all, anything like that? No, um, the guy, I just seen the guy was wearing burgundy shorts. Burgundy shorts? Yes. Any, uh, if, do you know if he's wearing a hoodie, a shirt? He doesn't have a shirt on. No shirt, no hoodie, no nothing? Yeah, no, nothing. What about the female? Um, the girl is wearing uh, black shorts and a, it looks like a black shirt as well. And they're from going the house to house right now. They just left her house and they're in front of our neighbors knocking, okay. I'm assuming. Do you know your neighbor's address real quick? Um, no. Okay, are they left or right of your house or across? Uh, across, but to the left. Right, we're going to have people come out there. If anything is to change, go okay. ahead and give us a call back, okay? Okay. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right. Goodbye. Okay. okay. 5.911, where is your emergency? What's going on? Uh, someone's been shot. They're at my front door. I'm just talking to them through through the camera. There's two people, a man and a woman. They are in our driveway. Okay. What are They're they look like? Uh it's an African American woman. She's uh, she has dreadlocks, and an African American man. He has um, he doesn't have a shirt on. He's got on some basketball shorts, and okay. she's in socks. And you and he's saying that he's been shot. Uh, no, sh there's someone else that's been shot. Okay. W were you shot, ma'am, or was he shot? Somebody was shot in the house at twenty seven thirty four. Twenty seven thirty four. Yes. I'm sorry, you can't come inside. All right, we're getting everyone started, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, I called the police for you. They're on their way. You're welcome. This is a great way to start the day. <laughs> Hello? Ma'am, are you still there? Yes, I'm sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, what's your name? Yes. And where are you currently at? What's your address? Um, uh, yes. Do, you, uh, do the people outside your house know who shot uh, whoever's at uh, 2734? Let, let me ask them. Okay. Do you know who shot the, the person at that address? Yeah. Um, the, the man is saying that it was his father. Do you know if he still has the gun? Hold on. Okay. Um, do you know if he still has the gun? I'm sure he does. I don't know. I, I, I pulled a magazine out. Okay. He said he said he's he's sure that he still has the gun. He pulled the magazine out. What kind of gun was it? I don't know. You, do, you don't know. Do you know? Uh, can you ask him if uh, his father's been drinking, doing any drugs, anything like that? Okay. Has your father been drinking or doing any drugs? Do you know anything like that? No, not that, not, not that I'm aware. I don't know. Okay. okay. Give me just a second. I'm still on the line with 911. I'll, I'll call that number. Um, and do they, I, I heard what they said. Uh, do you know, um, uh, if, uh, do you know, what is their father's name? What's your father's name, sir? What did they say? You said, is that correct? Yes. Okay, are they still outside your house currently? Yes, they are. And the, the woman is saying uh, the man she's with is her boyfriend. And she slept over at his house last night. It was the female's boyfriend? Yes. Nico! 
the, the, the two people that are in our, uh, they're standing in the driveway now. I think they, I hear the police. Okay. Okay, they came. They came Mommy! Shh, 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 shh. Okay, give me. Are they still standing in your driveway currently? Uh, no, they're, they're standing in the, on the porch now. Are they talking with the police? No, um, I hear the police, but I don't see them right now. Okay. Can you stay on the phone with me uh, yes. while until the police talk with them? Yes. All right, thank you. I just need to know if they leave anything like that. Okay. Are the uh, males? Uh, can the male and uh, female hear you on the camera again or no? Um, I have to hold it to talk. Okay. Um, if by chance, can you ask them what uh, their father's wearing? Can you please tell me what your father's wearing? He's wearing gray, gray shirt, black pants, top knee has on flip. Did you hear that, sir? No, I didn't. What did he say? He said gray shirt, gray pants, and slippers. And what's the boyfriend's name? What's your name, sir? That's the male's name? Yes. So the, I'm just making sure the male on the porch is correct? Yes, yes that's correct. Yes. Okay. And what's the female's name? What's the woman's name you're with? Thank you. Did you get that, sir? No, I didn't. What is it? Uh, and can you ask them the name of the individual that was shot? Do you know the name of the person that was shot? No, they don't know who was shot. Okay. Can you tell them to step out to the front yard so that they can talk with the police? Okay. 911 is asking you to step out to the front yard so that you can talk with the police. Okay. Are they here? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're at the house. Okay, they're walking. They're walking. They're walking over. The woman doesn't feel comfortable walking. What about the male? Um, they're both standing. Okay. Can you ask them just to step in front of your front yard? Okay. Just step down to the mailbox of our front yard, please. Okay, uh, there's two officers in front okay. of our house. All right, they're speaking with them? Yes, they are. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome, thank you. All right, no problem. All right, bye. When officers arrived, there were already four dead bodies inside the home. Before turning the weapon on himself, Robert Creighton Jr. had shot and killed his wife, 46-year-old Athalia Art Athena Creighton, and her three children, 18-year-old Kaysen Creighton, as well as Nyla and Nasir, aged 10 and 16. It soon became clear that Robert had been struggling with mental health issues beforehand. In fact, officers had responded to the home about five times since 2014 and he had been involuntary committed to a mental institute a year prior. The crime scene was so haunting that even the police captain who had 18 years of service, Matt Truitt, said he was not prepared for what he had witnessed. The mental well-being of responding officers also became a grave concern since many said they have never seen anything like it before. The shooter's wife, Athalia Creighton, had served as a sergeant in the Army's 2nd Infantry Division contributing as a skilled heavy equipment mechanic. Beyond her military service, she was a life coach and interior designer. The two survivors were a 22-year-old man, a family member, and a 25-year-old female visitor. According to a neighbor, the man said that it was his father. He woke up and there was a gun to his head. Somehow he pulled the magazine out of the gun and they escaped. It remains unclear why the gunman chose to attack his family, and authorities said they will likely never find out. From her tranquil Florida retirement village home, 76-year-old Carol Thomas frantically called 911 while watching an alligator attack her neighbor. 911, please fire or an ambulance. Stop you! Oh Hello? Oh my god. Hello? This is 911. 911, there's a woman in the alligator's daughter and she's on a daily street. She's what? The alligator's daughter. This, an alli alligator's a dog? dog? An alligator has a woman. Okay, what's the address? What's the address? Okay, how big is it? It's a huge gator. 
It's true. I don't have anything to get to her. Is she alive? Erin. Yes, she's alive. She pulled her in. She pulled her in the lake. Okay, hold on, ma'am. I'm gonna, ma'am, I'm gonna turn you over to the fire department, okay? What's your name? It's too late. It's too late. You, oh my God. Did it pull her under? Yes. Oh no. It pulled her under? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna turn you to the fire department. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. Fire rescue, what is the address of your emergency? Oh, okay, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, take a deep breath for me, okay? Okay. I am. Yes. All right. All right. How old? How old is the female? How old is she? She's look? old. She's seventy-five. Oh, okay. All right. So, and you said an alligator pulled her in. Pulled her in the lake. I can't see her. I ran to get a pole to pull her out, and I can't see her. Okay. All right. She's on the safe house. Okay. All right. You, need, you don't see any any of her body. Nothing sticking out. Nothing. I see a shoe like she was swimming toward me. I said, come to the bank. I was trying to stick a pole out for her. And I was okay. calling you at the same time. And I, she's gone. Okay. She's gone. Now stay on the phone with me, okay? Come on, honey. I got to get her dog so he doesn't get hurt. Okay, so the dog. Let me let you in. The dog. Let me, let me, he's all wet. I'm going to put him on his little porch. Okay. Come on, honey. Calm down. She's so frightened. God. Oh my God. I don't know why people walk their little bitty dogs near the lake. Oh, dear. okay. All right. Oh my God. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't. I know. I couldn't get down. I know, but I want you, I need you to stay away from the water, too. I am. I am. Okay. I am. I am. I am. I can't do that. And, and you have her dog, right? The dog is alive? I put him inside. Oh, okay. I put him inside. Okay. Oh, I see her. Okay, she's I'm going to. floating. Gonna... She's floating? I see her. She's floating. Oh, okay. I think she's gone. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. I'm going to let you speak with the officers, okay? I let everything, I let my paramedics know everything, okay? Okay. All right, to, to go talk to them. Oh, I think he's... Okay. All right, bye-bye. An 11-foot alligator attacked 85-year-old Gloria Surge as she tried to save her dog, Trooper. The tragedy was captured on a wildlife camera in the Spanish Lakes Fairways retirement community in Fort Pierce, Florida. Minutes before, the alligator silently stalked Gloria and Trooper for over 100 feet before bursting from the water and lunging at the dog. Carol recalled how the tragedy played out. I just remember her coming up and, you know, pushing her hair out of her face and getting air, and I'm saying, swim toward the paddle boat, swim, and she says, I can't, the gator has me. I got my longest shepherd's hook to try to hook her or hit him or do something. I couldn't do anything. Authorities later retrieved the woman's body from the lake. The gator, known to locals as Henry, was captured and euthanized. Neighbors were left in disbelief about the attack. We're used to seeing them, but they're usually not doing anything. They just lay in the sun. He does not move. He was never aggressive. This is horrifying. It's, we won't forget that. We won't forget that. Although Florida is home to an estimated 1.3 million alligators, and they can be found in nearly all freshwater bodies, sometimes even venturing into salt water, Actual attacks on humans are relatively rare. Between 1948 and 2021, 442 unprovoked bite incidents were recorded, with only 26 resulting in human fatalities. However, following this tragic event, officials have issued warnings regarding the dangers of walking pets near ponds and lakes, given that Gloria was the third victim since July 2022. Miraculously, Trooper survived. Although a 911 call hasn't been released, this is one of the most notable cases from 2023, predominantly because of her husband's search history. Anna Walsh, 
a 39-year-old Massachusetts mother of three, has been missing since New Year's Day, and her husband, 47-year-old Brian Walsh, has been charged with murder. He was initially arrested on a charge of misleading the investigation. As a new year started, Serbian-born Anna was at home before, according to Brian, she took a rideshare to the airport. He said a work emergency occurred and Anna had to fly to Washington, D.C. To date, police haven't been able to confirm these details, instead saying the woman was due to fly three days later. Anna was regional general manager at the real estate company Tishman Spire and often traveled for work. The couple had been celebrating New Year's with a friend who left after 1 a.m. In an interview with iTeam from CBS Boston, that friend, Jem Moodlu, struggled to hold back tears. She said, Jem, I know you won't go out on New Year's Eve. I know you'll just stay home by yourself. And, you know, Brian and I would love to see you just come over. Like, if there's anyone we'd love to see, we'd love to have over to you, please come. And so I said, of course. It was festive. She was texting with friends and she was sitting next to me. There was absolutely no indication that any modicum of a tragedy of disappearance or anything else could have, could have happened that night. Mutlu also gave an insight into the Walsh's relationship. The fact that they hadn't, you know, they had been living in separate homes, she was commuting back and forth, she wasn't seeing the, the children as often as she would have liked. It's believed the 39-year-old left for the airport between 6 and 7 a.m. There was no activity on Anna's phone, credit cards, or social media accounts. Brian Walsh told police he spent New Year's afternoon running errands for his mother at Whole Foods and CVS. But investigators found no receipts and he was not seen on security video from either store. However, the next day, January 2nd, he was captured on CCTV wearing a surgical mask and gloves and buying $450 worth of goods, including cleaning supplies, mops, and tape at a Home Depot. It would also be the last time Anna's phone would connect to a tower near before it was turned off. By the 4th of January, her employers grew worried. The head of security called Cohasset police around 11.45 a.m. to request a well-being check. Anna's car was in Washington, and although the company had contacted her husband, he had not filed a missing person report. Brian, meanwhile, had left this voicemail for a friend. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Brian Walsh. I uh, hope all is going well. Um, I was just, just reaching out to basically everybody I could. Um, Anna hasn't been in touch for a few days. Uh, we, um, I, I spoke to work today. She hasn't been in. She went to the house uh, and she wasn't there or looked like she's been there recently. So um, just wondering if you've spoken to her uh, in, in the news, uh, you know, recently, like on Sunday or, or in the last two days. Um, if so, let me know, or if you know anyone that might have that contact with her, uh, just, uh, you know, calling everyone. So, uh, sorry to bother you. Sure, everything's fine, and, uh, you know, you can wish Thanks. Police then interviewed Brian, who said his wife left for work in Washington at 6.30 a.m. New Year's Day, and he hasn't heard from her since. I actually found out about her disappearance from Brian on Wednesday morning. I had texted them on Sunday morning, New Year's Day. I didn't hear back because the evening that I was there, Brian had said that he had misplaced his phone. Brian texted on Monday afternoon, around 2.30ish, to say something to the effect of, yes, it's been great, you know, it was great to have you. I didn't hear anything until Wednesday morning when I was walking, when Brian called and he sounded off. I said, uh, what's wrong? Is, is, is there something wrong? And he said, yeah, but he says, uh, Anna's missing. He said she said that she had a work emergency that morning and then had left off. Um, in any case, I said, you know, have you called other people? Have you called the police? Like, this could be serious and just make sure that the police know. Thursday morning, Brian and I were talking and he said the Cohasset police may be calling me, the detective, but I didn't wait i called them a part of me had this this suspicion all along that there may have been foul play and that somehow it just the story wasn't adding up 
Investigators also noted that when they arrived to carry out the wellness check, his car seats were down and a plastic tarp was over them. The tarp was gone when they asked him about it, but blood was found in the vehicle. The ground search was called off just two days after initiating it. By then, Anna had been missing for six days. Then, on January 8th, police returned to the Walsh home to execute a search warrant, and Brian Walsh was arrested for misleading their investigation. More than a week later, Brian was officially accused of assaulting and beating his wife with the intent to murder her, as well as of moving her body or remains. In court, the accused stared intently at prosecutors while showing little to no emotion while they revealed what had led to the arrest. At the Walsh home, there was blood in the basement and a damaged knife with blood on it. They found a hacksaw, other blood-covered items, and Anna's COVID-19 vaccination card in the trash from Brian's mother's house. But the most alarming evidence would be the more than a dozen internet searches over different days. According to prosecutors, in December 2022, before Anna was missing, Brian googled, what is the best date to divorce a man in? And just an hour before the mother allegedly left for the airport, the accused had used one of their children's iPads. On January 3rd, that same day, at 1.02 p.m., he did some more uh, Google searches. What happens to here on a dead body? At 1.13 p.m., what is the rate of decomposition of a body found in a plastic bag compared to on a surface in the woods? At 1.20 p.m., can baking soda mask or make a body smell good? Prosecutors claimed that Brian had hired a private investigator in 2022 and routinely visited the Instagram pages of his wife's male friends. In contrast, he says, through his attorney, it was his mother. He has never suspected his wife of having an affair. The 47-year-old is the sole beneficiary of Anna's life insurance policy, totaling more than $2.7 million. Brian Walsh has maintained his not guilty plea to the first degree murder conviction, which carries a mandatory life sentence in prison without parole in Massachusetts. This was not his first run-in with the law. It has recently come to light that in 2014, Anna Walsh reported to DC police, Brian had made a statement over the telephone that he was going to kill her and her friends. The couple were not married yet and the case was closed after the woman decided not to pursue charges. Then there was his 2019 legal battles. Following the 2018 death of Brian Walsh's father, there was a lawsuit over his father's estate. In them, he was described as a violent liar and affidavits from relatives and friends. Brian was estranged from his dad over allegations of missing money to the tune of $1 million. In 2021, Brian pleaded guilty to three counts, including wire fraud, after he stole Andy Warhol paintings from a college classmate and commissioned forgeries. Court documents show that he was ordered to forfeit $225,000 and does not appear to have been sentenced to any prison time in that case. Brian was seemingly under house arrest when his wife was last seen, and some of his monitored activity in the following days violates this. Before her disappearance, Anna was reportedly trying to sell off her assets to move to DC. These reports remain unconfirmed, but a condo that the missing woman owned had been sold in a hurry on December 29, 2022. Brian Walsh was denied bail again in August 2023. His defense attorney, Tracy Minor, said that no body had been found and said there is no indication of if she died, how she died, and no murder weapon or motive established. Anna Walsh is still missing to date. It's the call that the 911 dispatcher, Marissa Anderson, never thought she'd hear. On the other end of the line, her children were screaming. Their house was on fire. Oh my God, don't go out. Door 20 911, what is the address of your emergency? Hello, Door County 911. Door, Door County 911. Kiwani County is still on the line. We're oh, transferring sorry. you a house fire. A house fire? What is the address? What is the address? 
Mom, it's... Okay, what's going on? They're flying to the backyard, Mom! Okay, okay, calm down. Only calm down. It's up in flames. What is up in flames? The house! The house is up in flames? No! Okay, just go ahead and get... You guys need to get out of the house. Get the animals what? out of the house. Listen to me. House, listen to me. Listen what? to me. Hey, guys, I need you to listen to me, okay? I need you to get yourselves out of the house. We're not in the house. We're outside. Do you have the animals outside? No. We can't get inside. You can't get You can't get inside the house? No. Melanie, this is my house. I don't want to home what the fuck? Just go inside. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Don't go inside. No. I don't know my house. Well, there's something going here now. Uh, hold on, guys, okay? Hold on. Mom will be there soon. Breathe, Lennon. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Hi, guys. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. You can calm down. It'll be okay. Thank you. Okay, just stay outside where you are. Your your oh, mom is on the way. She's had... I know. Mom. It's not mom anymore. No, oh, your mom God. is on the way. She is. She's coming right to you guys. Um, I think it came from the basement. I think because like I seen like flames like come from like the basement. Okay, you think it's coming from the basement? I would think, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We. Your mom is on the way, and we have the fire department being paged right now. They're going to be there shortly. Oh, that is a flame. Okay. Hey, okay, move that moped. Get whatever you want. I'm trying. All right. Okay, guys. Okay. Uh, just stay. W can you just stay where you are? Okay. Yeah, I'm just moving our bikes from the house because I don't want them to set on fire. Yeah. Oh, okay. You got my bike, man. Yeah, okay, guys. I'm gonna let you go so we can make sure that everybody gets there. Okay. 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 Bye. All right. Yep. Marissa's 12-year-old son, Landon, was sleeping when he heard glass breaking. He immediately got out and woke up his 17-year-old sister, Emma. As their mother had taught them to do, the children called for help. Understandably, the Wisconsin dispatcher struggled to maintain her composure while she handed off the call to her supervisor. Sadly, even though the children were able to get out, several pets were killed. Marissa said her 12-year-old son was blaming himself for being unable to save them. Now, the family has a GoFundMe currently sitting at more than $30,000 to try and rebuild their home. Meanwhile, investigators believe the fire was started because of electrical cord issues. In January 2023, off-duty police officer Michael Rusk screamed at a 911 operator shortly after allegedly shooting and seriously injuring Sergeant Christopher Gibson outside a Williamsburg bar. Although investigators initially said the incident happened due to a verbal argument after a night of drinking, the 911 call and surveillance video show another side of the story. 911, where is your emergency? <laughs> Hello? This is 35! Do what? This is 35! I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. This is 35! This is 35? Yes! Go Deli! You're at Paul's Deli? Yes! And this is 35? Yes! What does that mean? Michael lost my bad number! You did what? My badge number. But your badge number is 35? Yes, Michael Rusk. R-U-S-K. And what's wrong? I shot Sergeant Gibson. Do what? I shot Sergeant Gibson. You shot Sergeant Gibson? Yes. How did you do that? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So I didn't get him. I pulled a gun on him. Can you advance on me? That. And you're in Paul's deli? Yes. In the city of Williamsburg. Is he breathing? He just fell out. I'm okay. trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. 
<laughs> okay, where did you shoot him? I shot him in his, I don't know, his right arm. You shot him in his arm? Yes. And you're inside. Okay, I need you to take a deep breath for me, okay? Is he breathing? Is he breathing? I'm trying to save his life. Okay, take a deep breath because if he isn't, we need to start CPR. I'm trying. Where are you at in Paul's Deli? Hey, where are you at I'm in trying, Paul's Deli? I'm trying to start CPR. Okay, where are you at? One of you all, I need you to come over here, please. One of you all, I need you to come here, please. And you're in Paul's Deli? Come here, come here. I need you to start CPR on him. Hurry. Thirty, thirty compressors to two. Start keeping your compressors. One. Are you two, behind three, Paul's four, Deli? Five. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Is three, someone three, doing three, CPR? What was that? Are you, is someone doing CPR? Yes. Hey. Hey. Where is the weapon? Where is the weapon? Start CPR. Start CPR. Who are you Don't talking to? to? Sit off here. I have a gun on me. Where? Here, here. You have it. You have it. Is I'm there an officer there? Hey, I'm a giant kitty. I'm a big kitty officer. Start shooting him. One, two, three, four. Are, are you okay, Chris? No. Start on him. God damn it. Just start on him, please. Are they doing CPR, sir? Have they started? Hey, can you tell if he's breathing? I can't tell. I can't tell. Where Do you see any Ransburg officers? Do you see the Ransburg officers? Sir? Yes. Do you see the officers? Yes, they're on scene. Okay. I'm going to let you go. What's your name again? Michael Rusk or USK. They're starting CPR. How did you shoot him? What do you mean? I can't get up. He was supposed to be I was. Oh, no. He kept going. He kept me going. I kept going. I told him to stop. He kept going. I thought he was going to me. I thought he was going to rape me. Help me. Help. Help. I'm with you. Okay, okay. I know an officer here. I know an officer here. I'm going. Here he's going. He's going. The call was made in the early hours of January 25th. That's when James City County Officer Michael Rusk allegedly shot Sergeant Gibson. In the surveillance video, the two are seen hours before the incident sitting across from one another at a table. The sergeant then moves around to the other side so he is sitting next to Rusk. When Gibson reaches for Rusk's hand under the table, the advance is met with hesitation from the younger officer. When the pair leave the bar, Gibson puts his hand on Rusk's shoulder. The footage then shows Rusk forcefully pushing him off and putting a finger in his face before walking away. He is now out on bond for the charges surrounding the shooting. Michael Rusk's family and lawyer believe it was self-defense, saying the officer had suffered unwanted sexual advances from his superior. The shooter's father told a media outlet that his son had been subject to these advances from Gibson for about a year before the shooting. He said it started to get creepy when the sergeant would show up on Rusk's girlfriend's street. Jason Rusk said that Michael reported the behavior to others at the police department, but they were written off. There was a year's worth of grooming that had taken place. Extremely inappropriate touching, stalking, the grooming, the previous to the incident assaults. When a local media outlet requested the history of any complaints filed against Gibson within the department, it was denied. Following the incident, James City County Police placed Rusk on unpaid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation, which Williamsburg Police are conducting. Sergeant Christopher Gibson was also placed on paid leave while an internal investigation was carried out. U.S. Marine Corps veteran Roy Link 
planned a fishing trip in February, but something told him to join the search for missing two-year-old Joshua J.J. Rowland. And the little boy's family will be eternally grateful that he did. 911, what's the address your emergency? Hey, I found him. Emma. You found him? Uh, hey, where are you at? Oh, mommy. Uh, I'm walking over here to a field, an open field. Uh, okay. Uh, mommy. Um, oh, mommy. Okay. Uh, okay. Just give me one moment. Stay in line with me. Okay. What is your name? What's your phone number for you? And you said you're in a field? Excuse me? He said he, that you're in a field? Uh, yes, I'm walking out to it now. This guy might have a... Yeah, I found him. Yeah, I'm on there with 911. You know where we're at? How is he doing? Is he... Right next to where? Okay, we're next to Paul Middle School. Next to, next to the road in this field. All right. How is he doing? He's good. He's doing good? Okay. Yeah, he's alive as well. Yeah, we're giving him some water and he's wanting mama. Want some more water? Okay. No. No? Okay, let's walk up here to the road. Yeah. We got him here. Good job, buddy. Hey, just stay on the line with me, okay? We're trying to get yeah. the okay. out to you. Yeah. last night? No. No? Uh -huh. no? Your mommy. Your mommy's coming. Can you stay where you're at just so we can get units to you? Okay, sure. Yeah, so yeah, just stay where you are. Just stay on the line for you. Excuse me. Yeah, he's on the phone now. Excuse me. Hello, ma'am. Hello. I'm still here. Yes. Um, we're if we're walking toward Cobb Road. We're behind. We're beside the school, Parrot Middle School. Okay. So you're walking toward Cobb by the middle school. We're walking toward Cobb in the big field right beside Parrot Middle School. They'll know where it's at. Yes, sir. We just give him some water and okay. he's a little, a little panicked. I give him some water. He, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I figured this is where he was going to be because mm -hmm. this is a, a, an area right behind his house. Okay. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming right here. Hey, they want us to walk out here to Cobb. They want us to walk to Cobb right there. You want us to take him on to Cobb? We can take him back there. It's all right, yeah. No, but I can drive. I can drive him. It's all right. We can just walk in the shade up here. That way he don't get... We don't want him to get panicked. I right, get in the shade. You still there, sir? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, How many people are there with you? Oh, uh, about 15. And how far away from... How are you? Uh, probably a hundred yards. Okay. Yes, yeah. Hundred yards. Yep. Yeah, we're probably a hundred yards from the highway. Uh, we can see the. They're gonna uh, put him in a side by side. Oh, he don't want to get in it. Never mind. He don't want to yeah. get in it. He's too scared of it. I figured. Yeah, that's okay. Just keep him with you. Yes. Yeah, we got plenty of people here. He's good. They're giving him a little bit of candy right now and giving him some drinks and. Okay. He's, I'm sure he's starved. Yeah. But yes, sir. He's good. Oh, yeah, just keep me on the line and call a deputy there with you. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Yep. It was good to have all the boots on the ground to find him. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you guys still walking towards Cobb? Yes. Okay. Just we are right know. now. Just let me know when you actually get on Cobb, okay? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit because we're, like I said, we're 100 yards, 150 yards probably. Yeah, that's okay. Do you have anyone else that can, like, go out to Cobb and just to uh, meet our unit there and start leading Hang them back? On. And hey, they, get hey they want to know, could you run up there and flag them down? Yeah, yeah she's going up there on the side-by-side -side right now to flag them down. Okay. Yeah, the big orange side-by-side. -side. The big orange one? Yeah, big orange and black side-by-side. -side. They can't miss it. Okay. There'll be a gate right there, but it's it's closed and locked, but... But they'll be able to see. Good job, buddy. Way to make it. Way to make it. Such a big guy you are. He got some scratches and scrapes and bruises, but over 24 hours alone in the woods. Yeah, he did great. Yeah, he did great. There they are, right there. There they are. Yep. Okay, do you see the unit? Yeah, here they are. They're here. Yeah, they're here. Okay. I will let you go and right, talk you. to them. Thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.
The toddler had wandered away from his Hernando County home on the morning of Thursday, 23 February, while his mother was asleep. An hour after she noticed he was gone, she contacted the sheriff's office. A missing child alert was issued the same day. The next morning, volunteers, law enforcement officials, and the U.S. Marshals started the search before 6 a.m. Around 24 hours after J.J. had disappeared, Roy Link heard whimpering in the bushes. That's when he made the discovery. I came up on some woods and uh, I listened good. I heard like a whimpering kind of noise. At that point, I was like, there's no other kids here. It's got to be J.J. Sure enough, I went in the woods and about 100 feet from where I was at, he was, I think he was in some stickers. There's a lot of stickers and all there. The miracle even made Sheriff Ninhuis emotional. I gotta admit I'm a little emotional because yeah, uh, I thought sure we were gonna have bad news and it is, uh, it is a good day in Fernando County. Roy was honored by the department for his heroism. If I'm a hero, then everybody is. You know, uh, everybody was there, everybody was searching. Perhaps the most heartwarming part of the evening Roy met J.J.'s father for the first time. He was just overwhelmed. He said his whole family is, and we said that we would meet in the upcoming days. He's going to give me a call so me and J.J. can catch back up and, and go from there. For more True 911 calls, watch this episode next.